Michael here from Guitargate, and I uh, wanted to come on and show you my PV Wolfgang. So, uh, you know, just like I made a, a video on the Fender Bullet, um, which is behind me, um, I wanted to make a video on the rest of my guitars to kind of tell you the story about them and why I play them for the purposes that I do. Um, so in other words, every guitar is a tool, and um, this one especially is a tool. It's kind of like a tractor. Um, like a Ferrari tractor, Lamborghini made a tractor once, um, and uh, yeah, so let's dive right into it. So this is a PV Wolfgang. Um, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, this is an Eddie Van Halen thing, right? So when Eddie Van Halen started working with brands to come out with guitars that um, he liked and he played and tour with, record with, etc., etc., he's gone through a whole gamut of different makers. Right now, there was a time when he did it with PV, and this is when I got it. I want to say I got this new uh, in 2003 ish, and believe it or not, this is the last new guitar, the most recent recent new guitar I have purchased, with the exception of a cheap $200 uh, Fender that uh, I gig with when I play acoustic stuff. Besides that. This is the last new piece of gear I've purchased, so it's been a minute for me. And the reason I got this guitar, and the reason that I love to play it still, is not just because I'm an Eddie Van Halen fan, which of course I am, um, and it really has nothing to do with PV uh, or anything else. It's the fact that this thing is pretty much indestructible, and it covers basically every genre and playing style that I would like to. Does it do any of them phenomenally well? Not necessarily, but it does do all of them in a way that, especially if you play in a cover band or a band that crosses a lot of genres frequently, mid-set, and you're not switching guitars, it's extremely effective. Um, so first, let me talk about just kind of how it's built, right? Now, the main thing for me that I love on this guitar is that it has this bird's eye maple neck. And I don't know if you can hear that, but this thing is super rock solid. I mean, it is, I mean, it's like a brick. Um, you literally, it's hard to hit. Like it, it's not like playing. Um, anything else I have back here. I mean, it is that bird's eye maple is rock solid. So if we're doing a lot of that country stuff or um, anything where you're doing a lot of hammer-ons, like, but you're like real aggressive with your hammer-ons, real aggressive, like, you know, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the snaps. The neck is just great for that, right? It is just because it's rock solid. I mean, it doesn't move. I mean, it's literally rock solid. So second, the most obvious thing you'll notice is that this is a Floyd Rose, right? So this is as um, you're locking nuts here and, you're, uh, and it locks in your bridge here. And the point of the Floyd Rose is so, since it's locked here, no matter what you do on the strings, it's not going to change anything in the tuning peg. So once you get it tuned, it's locked in, and it can't go out of tune, right? And then you can use these fine tuners, unless the strings stretch, in which case you use these fine tuners over the course of gigs 
to, to get those very small increments. But the problem with most Floyd roses, which is not a problem on this, is that if you break a string, then your whole thing is totally screwed, right? So if you play a Floyd Rose, a full floating Floyd Rose, I should specify, and you're in a gig and you break a string, all the other strings are so out of tune. It's not like um, uh, you know, a fixed tail guitar where the other five strings or four strings, depending on how many strings you break, are relatively in, in tuning still, right? If you have a full floating bridge, and the tension of the strings is what keeps the bridge in the place where it's supposed to be. If you remove that tension or add too much, everything else that relies on that tension being correct is going to be wrong. But on this guitar, and this is something I guess Eddie just kind of came up with, you can only dump the bar. So, I'm gonna let it ring out, pull up. I can hold it by this, and it really doesn't change the pitch that much, right? And that's because. It is hard against the wood here, right? It has five springs in the back, and they're all jacked as tightly as they possibly can be. Now, you don't have to have it set up like that, but that's the way I like it set up. I'll explain why in a second. And so this is hard against the back. I mean, you can bend all your strings, you know, as far up as you possibly could, and this thing isn't moving for a second. Um, and I do that. Because not only do I play a lot of heavier stuff, we play a lot of country stuff. And the great thing about having fixed tail guitars with country steel stuff, when you're doing those country steel bends, that is that when you bend, say, if I do this lick, right, this, if you bend the third string on a full floating bridge, whether it's a strat or anything, and the bridge floats easily, when you bend up one string, Again, we're increasing the pressure on the bridge, so the bridge is going to come forward, and these other two strings are going to go just the tiniest bit out of tune, right? Which is why a lot of country stuff, you don't see a lot of strats, you see a lot of tellies. It's for that exact reason, right? Because they both have the single coil pickups, you can get similar necks, blah, 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 blah. Mainly, it's so when you're doing bends where one string is bending, the other two aren't, it's the other two that they don't move, so you get that steel string sound. So you can get this on this guitar, even with the Floyd Rose, because it's hard against the back wood. Now, what's the caveat to that? The caveat is you can only, you obviously can't go up, but to go down, since you're fighting five springs, it is incredibly difficult to push this down. Now, again, you don't have to string it like this. This is the way I like it. And the way I like it is that literally I have to put my hand on the other side of the guitar and squeeze to drop the bar. It takes basically all my effort to get it all the way down to touch the wood. I mean, literally, it takes just about all my effort to do that. Um, and so, you know, you'll get bruises here at the end of the night. I don't know if you can see this, but I have basic wear and tear in my palm just because of this, right? Which is kind of ridiculous. But, again, it makes it so we can go back and forth between, a, I mean, a straight up blazing country tune doing a lot of pedal steel stuff to, you know, Metallica if we wanted to. And with all the big dive bombs and the, the, the you know, the squealy, you know, doing the horse sound, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you don't have to switch guitars. And it works great. The other thing is the drop D tuner, which I can't recommend enough. Again, if you have a full floating Floyd Rose, it's not as effective because if you, because if you loosen this, right, it makes your E go into drop D. It's that simple. If we're in between tunes, all of a sudden we go into something with D, just pull it out, it's in D. Going back in, E, bam. Nothing to mess with, nothing to do, and it's perfect because it's locked and you have this little tiny tuner. But since you're plant moving this, and this becomes a little looser, the tension on all the rest of the strings will change. So these D tuners are, you know, aren't exactly perfect on a full floating Floyd Rose. But if you have one like this that only drops, where it's hard against the back, I mean, literally, you can go from standard to drop D, from going full slinky, right, to, uh, you know, those big pedal steel country bends and everything in between on the same guitar, 
And if you break strings, you're still in tune. And it's literally rock solid. I mean, you could throw it down the stairs. And like, I, I really don't think it would hurt it. I mean, I, I love gigging with stuff that I don't have to care about. I mean, I love that. So the last thing I'll say about this guitar is the pickups. So you would think, or at least I thought, that you know, buying a Van Halen guitar would have these super high output pickups. But that's not the case. And I found out over a long time of messing with this stuff that you know his whole approach was much less about uh, the guitar being um, the source of all the sound, right? It was you know the way he used to boil his strings and, and drop his pickups in the wax and everything else like that. He wasn't trying so much to have this be the main output of the guitar sound. The guitar was much more of the driver of the amplifier, right? And the amplifier was the real thing that you were playing. And I know a lot of you might hear that and say, think that's really strange or um, you know, just say I'm dead wrong about that. But if you try to go back and try to figure out his sounds uh, and his approaches, and if you spend a lot of time playing guitars that he built, you'll find that where they really shine where they really come into their element, like where this thing really, really does a good job. Um, it's not like a specific type of amplifier or anything like that, but it does great when this guitar is plugged into just an absolutely jacked up amplifier, right? And because these pickups are so low output and the guitar neck and everything else like, like that isn't really like this big, sustainy, beautifully sounding, chimey thing like this PRS over here, which is amazing. It's completely different animals. You know, that thing will sustain and ring out for days, and it's just, its natural sound is gorgeous. Like it itself is the, uh, you know, it, it's the work of art, like it's the instrument. But with this thing, it's different. I have found by using it, right, and trying to get different sounds that this thing does its best job when it's, it's being used to drive an amplifier hard, like hard, hard. Where like that is much better to, you know, I shouldn't say much better, but I feel like that thing is such a gorgeous thing. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous sound on its own that it's kind of your responsibility. It kind of lends itself to being played um, through an amp that is very transparent. And I'm not talking about volume when I mean jacked up. I'm talking um, like overdriven, like hot, hot, hot tubes. Um, and so that, you, you want something really transparent so like the chiminess and the actual gorgeousness of the sound rings out. So where like this, I'm telling you, it's just, it's just, you know, dump truck. It's tractor style, man. I'm telling you, if you put this into like a really jacked up, amplifier, not necessarily super high gain, but just really, really jacked up, you're going to be able to control that amplifier better than you can with basically any other guitar I've tr tried to play. You know, you go into a super high volume, super high gain scenario, right, with amps that are just screaming hot, especially tube amps, and you take a really high output pickup in there, especially like hot EMG 81s and something like that. That takes a long time to get good at controlling that, right? To really harnessing it and getting it under control. I mean, it is a true, true finesse to handle that type of power. But this, I'm telling you, it's like getting, it's like, it's just like getting in a car you've driven a thousand times. You can, you can get in the most ridiculous loud environment and with just volume and a tone, you can, you can feel completely confident just hammering it away and just throwing huge chunks of sound across the room. Um, and you never, ever feel like it's running away from you. That's why I play this guitar, um, especially in the cover band thing and doing lots of cross-genre things. Because zero tuning issues, it is physically bulletproof, right? Because I hate gigging with stuff I'm worried about, I mean, period. Um, I can do full dive bomb stuff if I'm doing heavier stuff and country steel bends if I'm doing country stuff everywhere in between. And three, because, and, and lastly I should say five, because I like to play 
traditional, you know, single channel, you know, highly driven, you know, lower wattage, you know, class A tube amps, because I like that big beef, I find that lower output pickups actually work better. And that combo together is my take on the PV Wolfgang. So if you like this channel, um, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And if you drop in the comments some suggestions you'd like to see for lessons, whether it's gear, uh, song stuff, um, please let me know. I mean, that's how I know what to make. And uh, stay tuned. I'll be telling stories on these other guitars and some other stuff I have and do some actual proper gear demos. And uh, yeah, I'm done talking.